Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to another inbox review. Very, very excited today. I've been waiting for this kit for quite some time now. From the moment I saw it was being released, I said I'm buying that. I want it. I've been following it, looking at the videos, the pictures, and it's immense. And it finally got released just over the weekend in the UK. Um, it's Tamiya's brand new Sitscale Africa Twin CRF 1000L. Uh, absolutely beautiful kit. I built a six scale kit of theirs before. I uh, did it on the e models channel. Uh, it was an older kit. Um, probably won't even compare in the slightest to this new release. Uh, but I love bikes. I've got loads of them in the stash. Um, this is only one six scale one I've got in the stash at the minute. Not a cheap kit. Uh, it's e models uh, where I got mine from. Uh, ordered it yesterday. Got delivered today by DPD. And it was £197 plus postage. Um, so it's not a cheap kit, but it's immense. I haven't even looked in the box yet. It's literally, literally this second just arrived. Uh, I want to get the review done, and I'm going to start it today. This is going to become one of my long-term projects, uh, along with another kit as well, a little bit later on. And uh, it just looks immense. I'm watching videos, uh, which I'll link in the description down below. There's a link to a Japanese model show down below. And it shows some absolutely fantastic footage of this. Uh, their new Tyrrell and their new Abrams, the 12, uh, 16 scale Abrams, which is immense. So watch the video, it's an hour long, might have to skip some of it, but just have a look. I'll put it in the description of the video down below. Absolutely fantastic video. And this thing just looks awesome. Uh, there's a chain set for it as well. It's a plastic chain set. Uh, it looks like it needs no glue. Might be wrong though. Uh, that was £30. So the email is never in stock, I'd order it elsewhere, and I haven't got it yet. Uh, it should arrive in the next day or two. Uh, but it looks brilliant, fully workable chain, and uh, I really can't wait to crack the box on this. So that's what we're going to do now. It's so like I say, emodels.co.uk, £197 uh, plus delivery. Uh, there's a few other places I've got in stock as well, but use emodels. Emodels are great, very reliable, and uh, obviously the sponsor for them as well. So it's always good to return the favour of your uh, spending your money there. <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. So there we go. So let's, uh, let's crack on with the view and see what we've got in the box. Okay, so there we go. With the cameras up, you can't even see the box proper. It is huge. That box is a good 2 foot by 18 inches. Big, big box. Uh, absolutely fantastic illustration of the uh, the bike on the front of the box. Uh, it's a beautiful looking bike. Absolute beast. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to something. Like I say, I've not even looked in the box yet. So this is going to be really, really exciting for me. Uh, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Let's have a quick look at the box. So on the front, we've got a Detail 1.6 scale static model display. Display model, sorry. The form of the CRF 1000 Africa trim is exquisitely detailed. It's an impressive render of the 998cc liquid cooled four stroke parallel twin engine. Metal shafts and screw attached parts give the model a truly authentic finish. Multi part wheels finishes separate with spoke and rim parts. Semi pneumatic synthetic rubber tires have realistic tread patterns. Move suspension utilizes coil springs and metal parts. To include the marking options, recreate tricolor and victory red color schemes. They're fantastic. Uh, like I said, the box is absolutely immense. It's a 50th anniversary memorial model, so absolutely lovely. Fantastic. We've got some um, detail on the side of the box, as you can see. There, it's a difficult one, this, because it's huge, it's hard to get in shot. Um, so, in the lens, 290 millimeters, so uh, 40 centimeters, so quite big, quite big, it's about 18 inches, I think. Um, obviously, the detail apart, which is the chain set, which I've got on order. And that's it, the rest of it is in Japanese. And on the other side, we have both schemes. Sorry, it's white now, it's not looking to do really. The white and the red, and a picture of the real machine as well, which is awesome. So let's crack this huge box and let's have a looky see what we've got inside. So, ooh, nicely packed. Oh, yeah. Anyone's built a 12 scale um, car of Tamers will instantly recognize. That kind of packaging, that's how they do it. So, we've got the forks there, part. Oh, they are immense. Absolutely huge. Got the wheels. Huge. More wheels. Like I said, the multi parts, get all the spokes. Fantastic. Tyres, monstrous. Absolutely monstrous. We've got clear parts in there, hoses, all sorts. In the bottom of here, oh my god, there's even bigger parts. Let's move that over there. Out the way, we've got the fairies. Which is there. We've got the screens, which are there. We've got the rims, ah, the chain, and several other components 
in there, the instructions. More plastic, more plastic, tons of plastic, lots and lots of plastic, a very nice colour walkthrough. So that'll be good to have a look at. We'll look at all this properly in a little bit. And the instructions, very nice instruction sheet. It's piling high now in front of the computer, in front of the camera. We've got the decals. My car graph, it's a shame, but if they're anything like the newer ones, it should be alright. And we've just got tons of plastic. So, I'm going to make some room, and then we're going to have a proper look at what we've got in the box. Right, so as we've got a monumental amount of parts, I'm not going to linger on everything. We're not going to look at every single part we normally do. We're going to have a good overlook. Anything interesting, I'll point out we're coming close. For the most part, we'll be on the high up camera, this one. Uh, and anything important, I'll come and have a look. If we come in to look at everything like I normally do, I'll take you all around all the sprues. We'll be here all day because there's tons in this box. It really is well packed. So we'll have a good look. I'm not going to skimp, um, but we're certainly not going to dwell on everything. All right, so we'll crack on. Let's start with uh, the fa uh, fairings, so the bodywear, basically. Uh, I'm not going to mention about the staples because I always do, but I hate Tamiya staples. There we go. Put the bag on the floor. We're not going to need them. So bodywork, as you can see, it's going to wipe the camera out a little bit. Uh, just because it's white. So we've got the tank moulded in half, side fairings, rear panels, handlebars, typical Tamiya, absolutely crisp, flawless. What can you say? If you know Tamiya's high-end kits, any of their kits really, uh, you'll know the quality of their moulding and this is just sublime. Um, it's created all those beautiful angular parts of that tank, fantastic. Really nice and really gives an indication of just how big this thing is. I've got monstrous hands, but um, you can depict just how big this thing actually is. Um, I'm never a fan of two-part tanks. They're just a bit of a pain, um, but it's a nice large tank, so it should be fairly simple. And it's nice and angular as well, so not too bad at all, but beautiful. Really nice body parts. I've got no idea where on earth I am going to put all these parts I've looked at because... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna run out of room. Give me a sec. I'm gonna pop everything out of the box so I can put it all back in. That's probably the best thing I can do, if I'm honest. So <laughs> we'll do that. Right, next part we've got. These look to be body components. And it's a slightly more flexible sprue. Um, but you've got like your inner uh, fur ends, I suppose you could call them. Um, so we've got like, what have we got? The front uh, framework for the headlight system and the front fairing, uh, the seat, um, mirrors, God, look at the size of the mirrors, mirrors are huge, they're monstrous, absolutely huge, uh, beautiful parts, really nicely crisply done, um, again, no issues at all, it's, it's just flawless, it's a brand spanking new kit, um, and there's not much to say <laughs> other than beautiful plastic, that is so aggressive that. Absolutely beautiful thing, really is. Um, I can't see any issues there at all, and I really cannot wait to start building this. It's going to be fantastic. So yeah, they, these are all like the inner frame, so not quite the cowling, uh, not cowling the fairings, but the inner parts to build up to the fairings. So um, you're not really going to see these as much, um, and I'm going to guess for most of the part they're going to be black on this. It tends to be a lot of the plastic trim is black and again no problems at all it's lovely we got another one oh, look at the size of that oh would you look at it would you just look at it so on there we got the rear section so this is going to be the rear uh wheel arch mug guard uh, obviously the seat and what have you attach on there we've got cooling fans there we have Cooling fan covers, we've got intakes by the look of it. I'm guessing where all these parts are, it's hard to tell. Uh, got some suspension components by the look of it, so on and so forth. And again, just beautifully molded. No issues anywhere, no other parts are damaged. They all look clean, crisp, just typical Tamiya quality. So, again, very, very nice. Like I said, I'm not going to draw all these parts because we will be here all day. Right, this looks like engine. Oh, that's beautiful. Very, 
very nice that's a, a hefty size lump so again just for size comparison it's not a tamiya bottle but it's dear as damn it it's a, a guns bottle so good old size of uh engine there again molded in tamiya's typical gray silver plastic they depict engines in and they've got the honda markings all nice detail you've got raised bolt detail recess detail a lot everything and again no issues it's, it's going to be build up nice it's going to look great get some different colored metals on there get a wash on there it'll really bring this alive uh, it's going to be a hefty lump. It's going to be nice to work on a motor that big. I enjoy the motors quite a lot, the engines. Um, whether it can do any scratch builds this, I don't know. Tammy has probably gone pretty much all out on this six scale, but I've got a few reference pictures there to look at, and we can see if there's anything to be added. But I'm going to guess for the most part. The only thing that may need altering is the hoses. Sometimes they're a little bit over scale. Um, but that looks great. That's going to be look really nice. Some lovely detail there. Like I say, you've got the nice Honda logo in there she's gonna look great and again beautiful absolutely beautiful in here we got some more components so air filter intakes sorry I shot air filter intakes hoses connections more plastic part more hoses hose connectors filters looks like filter so on and so forth and again beautiful quality beautiful crisp very very nice even right down to tiny little parts like these absolutely fantastic beautiful we have all oh, the exhaust so there should be some chrome parts in here as well i'm guessing i think i've seen chrome parts on the uh the built-up machine so, like I say, we've got the exhaust parts again, molded in that beautiful silvery grey plastic. And again, surface details nicely depicted. Any frameworks there, nice raised bolt detail, washers, so on and so forth. Lovely. Really nice. What time is staples that I hate? And again, really nice. Can't see any issues at all. You're not going to get issues with the plastic. The only thing you get on Tammy is the weird like marbling of the plastic, uh, like there. But it's never detrimental really. Fantastic. Beautiful. Is that a kickstart? That's a kickstart to me. Very nice. Lovely. I'm not sure how many sprues are in here. Uh, there's quite a few. There's a massive bag of parts there. We've got all separate ones. These are all separate, and then there's one big bag which must have about six sprues in it. And I'm not sure why they've done that, it's a bit weird. So, again, more black plastic. So, uh, lower parts of the forks, brake calipers, uh, throttle and handlebar controls, swing arm, is a rear swing arm. We've got. Lots of nice little detail parts, and again, no issues at all. Really nice. Uh, these forks are going to be beautiful to build. I'm looking forward to those. Obviously, the suspension's all fully articulated. It all works. Front and rear suspension, uh, the monoshock swing arm on the rear, and the dual forks at the front. Absolutely fantastic. Watch that video of link below. You'll see it all working in action. It does look absolutely fantastic. It really does. So great. Again, no issues at all. Anything needs a manufacturer's mark, has it? And again, once you paint these up, hit them with a wash, it really will bring them alive. Right, so this is this really big bag of parts. It's sellotape shut. Absolutely no idea why. Oh, and they're individually bagged as well. That's really strange. Okay, anyway. It's the chrome parts we were looking for. Right, in here we have disc rotors, which are massive. We've got a chain. We've got brake and clutch levers. As you can see. Uh, we've got foot pegs. Sprocket. Dash chain. Plastic chain is really good, actually. It's quite nicely detailed, as you can see. Um, not too bad at all. 
coming close you can have a look so there you go, nicely depicted the plastic chain not too bad at all we've got all the other components, so we've got um, I'm guessing that's clutch there's some um, pipe connectors, like I say you've got brake and clutch lever foot pegs, fuel cap, that's nice, very nicely detailed radiators very very nice lots and lots of nice little bits and bobs in there and again more than that silvery grey plastic chrome parts so in here we have the chromed exhausts which are very nicely done uh, chrome mirrors beautiful absolutely fantastic Highly, highly reflective, as you can see, almost like a mirror. Uh, we've got headlights, surrounds, got some nice Honda badges there. Beautiful. So, really nice. We come through on the close up, we can have a real close up at this. It's very high quality chrome. Almost a shame to um, de chrome it. So, if that can be left, that muzzle, uh, muzzle, muffler at the back, it certainly will be. Mirrors nice, you can see my cameras there in the mirrors. You might see me. Ah, ah, ah. So yeah, very, very high quality chrome work. Beautiful. We'll pop that back in this bag, I think, to see if it's getting damaged that the one it came out of. Looks too small. But it must be. Here we go. Oh, get in. There we are. I need a stapler. You should not want those getting scratched, they can go back in. Let's pull those other parts over. Right, so we have um, this is a I'm guessing it's a split display stand. That's what it looks like. We're not going to get it out, as you can see. Clear, frosty plastic. Um, it's obviously some sort of stand, so we'll have a look at that in a bit. Obviously, it shows in the instructions, but a nice little inclusion into the kit. We've got the main frame to the bike. I'm still bewildered as to why all these bikes go bag separately. I don't get it at all. But anyway, so yeah, the main frame to the bike there. Not much to say. Again, fantastically done. What have we got going on here? Ooh, we've got a size guy. Look at that. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Look on the close-up cam. You can see 1.2. 1.6 mil. I'm not sure what's going on there with that. I'm sure all will become apparent in the instructions. But again, nicely molded plastic frame. Nicely done. I'm looking good. Very cool. Not much to say, unfortunately. It's a piece of plastic. That's all it is. More framework. So, let's go that way. So, yeah, more framework. I'm not exactly sure what it is. In fact, I can't tell you what any of these parts are. But, as with everything else, all beautifully moulded. No imperfections, no flash, no problems, no bother. Absolutely beautiful. And this is what you're paying for. It's a £197 kit, it's not cheap at all. Uh, but essentially, it's a high quality kit from Tamiya. Um, the 30 second scale aircraft are fantastic. All their bike kits, uh, the newer ones, is, is absolutely sublime. And this is stunning as well. All the other kits are good as well, don't get me wrong. The armour, a bit of a simpler kit um, compared to some of the market, but they're good. And their 48 scale range of aircraft are fantastic, as are the 72nd. But they really seem to put a lot more emphasis into the 30 second scale aircraft and all their bikes. Um, the cars are good as well. Um, so basically Tammy is a good manufacturer, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, the, the Cisco bikes are lovely. Some of them are knocking on a bit now. Uh, and I would like to see them do a race rep in one second. Well, not a race rep, an actual race bike. Something like that Kawasaki Ninja ZXRR would be awesome in six scale. And uh, yeah, I would, uh, yeah, I'll be queuing up for that one as well. Whether they'll do it, I don't know, but I need to. Right, so we have the seat from Arch, and a few of the little components. It's white, so it's whitening out the camera, unfortunately. 
but nice, really, really good looking. No issues there at all. Again, nothing I could sit here all day going, oh, it's fantastic, but it is, it's just that, it's, it's fantastic quality. It's full, it's got a nice bit of texture on the seat, which is nice. So that's going to look nice with a bit of uh, paint on there. Should hopefully depict the material used. It's another lovely sprout. Now we've got the rims themselves, so I'm taking it that this thing yeah, is a little jig to build up the rims. So if we get this out, can't really stop putting the staples in your kits. So you go, two rims, as you can see, nice protected, nice big ring of sprue all the way around. So very nice, and this must be a little jig to make up the rims. Obviously, all individually spoked, which we're gonna we'll show in a second. Um, and obviously, you build them up as you go on. That we'll have a proper look at that through uh, when we get to the instructions in a little bit. We're gonna pop that back in this bag. There's a few particular sprues. Anything that's just a normal sprue, I'll normally leave out the bag. But anything like that, um, I'll put back in. So any bodywork. So. We've got clear parts, we've got the rims, we've got tyres, so we'll start with the rims. Now, I honestly don't want to get these out, if I'm honest. Now, there's two sets. There's like an inner and an outer, so we're going to pick one, because I don't want to take them both out. They're pretty much identical, so we're going to leave them in. God damn it, I hate these staples. I moan about them in every time I review I do, because they scratch the plastic. Wow, now that is delicate. Okay, so as you can see, there is one section of rim. So it is only that centerpiece and these spokes, everything else is scrap. So you use that jig, pop them on, pop the other ones on, which are these, and build up your rim that way. Obviously, there will be four parts to each wheel. So that's a very good way of doing it. It's very, very delicate. You have to be really, really careful trimming those parts but that's going to look absolutely fantastic it really is uh, probably the only way I guess they could replicate those wheels with those very fine wire spokes that's the only way you could do so like I say it's going to be four components for each rim uh, you've got these four and these four I'm not going to get them out because they're very very similar there's no point um, but that's going to build up really good like I say a lot of care is going to be needed there with that um, because they're going to be very easy to snap. And you don't want to do that at all. They're a high profile part that you can really spot and see from the kit. So a lot of care and uh, time needed there. I'm going to pop them back in there. They can definitely be kept safely to one side. Right, uh, we'll do the glass and then we're on to all the little goodies. So let's get this out. If you're doing this, get the staple out, the glass parts, because I have scratched Tell me a glass clear parts with these bloody staples. I hate them. And yes, I moan about them a lot. So, clear parts. So we've got the front screen, headlights, rear light, brake, indicators, and other stuff. So, that huge piece is just fantastic. Yeah, as clear as clear can be, no flaws. No distortion. Really, really nice. No issues there at all. Is there? There's a little, like a line through that there, but I don't think it's detrimental to it. Like I say, you got the front house, house, the front light house, and the rear light house, and the brake light uh, indicators. And the smaller screen, I forgot oh, that's four now. But no issues with the clear parts, they're lovely and clear. Some of the best clear parts I've ever seen, I think. Optically, absolutely superb. You bring it all the way up. Very mineral distortion, even at like a foot away. So, very, very high quality. It's as if you're just looking through nothing. It's beautiful. Well done, Tammy, with that one. But will we expect anything less? No, probably not. So another nice part, they can go there, we'll do the delicate parts. Right, let's have a look at these tyres. Just around our staples on these. Right, so in here we have some 
looks like double sided tape, I'm not going to get it out because it's going to go missing otherwise and some chrome reflective stickers so there and there, we've got one of the tyres which is just immense and some clear parts of light, so we've got amber plastic for, I'm guessing indicators and red plastic for the rear brake light as well so okay, I'm not going to get them out, there's no point, they're there you can see them, very nice quality clear red, clear amber and then the tyre Right, so, immense, absolutely immense, seam line to deal with, which isn't much of an issue, um, but that is a big, big tyre, um, that thing is ooh, four and a half inches in diameter, so that's a good size, gives you a good indication how big this bike's going to be, <laughs> and I don't know where this is going to go when it's built, but it's going somewhere. Um, that's going to be absolutely immense. So yeah, I got 150 by 70 R18 MG 70X or K. It looks like a K. Directional as well. No manufacturer on there. Uh, and then the other bag, we've got the other tire and the hoses. So the other tire, slightly bigger diameter, probably near a five inch. Again, nice tread. I didn't touch the tread on that one. Very nice tread on them. Really nice. Like I say, you've got a seam line to deal with, but if you grab one of our uh, black UMP sanders on the uh, 240 side, that'll deal with that in no time at all. Probably a good 10 minutes of vigorous rubbing will whip that off for you. And then we've got two nice big bundles of Tamiya's vinyl hose. Now, if it's in like any other Tamiya bikes, this is going to be perfect scale for some bits. A massive overscale for others. I've got a lot of active market for bikes and I've got tons of this stuff in all different sizes so we'll play it by ear as we go. Uh, any updates today on that? I'd love to do a video build on this, I really would but it's just too much of an undertaking. Uh, if you've never done a video build before you don't realise how much it takes to do. Um, I'd love to video build it for you guys but it'll slow the build right down for me uh, and it's just an immense undertaking so I really would like to, but what I'll do, I'll do regular at the bench updates, I'll try and do them weekly on it, and I'll cover anything a change, or add, or scratch build, but that is one area of the kit that may need some alteration, I'm going to call it, um, only because, well, i got a ton of these bikes, i got like probably 40 odd, 12 scale, uh, yeah, 12 scale bikes, uh, I love them, um, there are a couple of parts started on the way, um, that I, I just got sidetracked a little bit on, and a few of them are display case behind I've built, and I've got tons of these things. I've got a lot of aftermarket, which is quite handy. So I'm just going to pop those back in there. Let's pop that in. And pop you at the back there. Now, the big bag of goodies. So, what have we got in here? We've got four parts. Screwdriver. A big shaft. Who were And loads of little bits and bobs. So there's a good chance a lot of these aren't going to get open. So we'll come to the close-up cam so you can see them. So in there we've got the spring for the big rear monoshock. And we've got four springs for, I'm guessing, the front shock. And some, I forget what they're called, the, the pulling type of spring. Uh, my mind's gone blank. So they're in there. Very nice. We've got some more components, I'm guessing, for the front. I don't know. We've got a big, long bolt, a nut two brass coloured shafts and a thing. So I'm guessing they're for the rear swing arm. I'd a guess, but there are those as well. We got a bag of screws. Another bag of screws. Another bag of screws. Oh, and some bolts. Alan hit the bolts. Ooh. Uh, another bag of screws. Oh, focus. Hello. There we go. Another bag of screws. And a spanner, which is the first I've ever got in a Tammy kit. Oh, two spanners. A screwdriver, an Allen key, and two magnets. So what are the magnets for? Oh, it's got to be a body panel. And it's got to be a removable one underneath, I'm going to guess. But two spanners, I'm guessing they're for the fork sets. Uh, Tammy's typical screwdriver in there. 
and an allen key and two magnets as well so they're all the little screw bags bits and bobs oh another bag of screws sorry i missed that one and in this one we have the forks and a big screwdriver so we've got a big phillips head screwdriver as you can see to go with the little one we got over there and then the four components i'm not going to get them out because i don't want them damaged uh, but basically we've got two shafts that are going to go up and down two chrome plated parts and these plated parts here as well uh, quite often an aftermarket uh, accessory for the tamiya bike kit so nice to get it included and it looks immense so if you look at that video i shared it just looks fantastic no painting ever required on these literally assembled as per the instructions and away you go you're gonna have no issues at all uh, like i say they're normally uh, aftermarket accessories let's get them in the kit is a really nice touch so you've got plenty of screws, pipes, tools, springs, all sorts of stuff to keep you entertained. Um, I'm going to put those at the back because, like I say, I'm starting this kit as soon as this video has been edited. So they can literally go at the back there and then I'll be put in tubs so I know where they all are. Right, so we've covered all the parts. All we've got left now are the instructions and decals and paperwork. So... But I'll look at the decals in a minute. Over here we've got a part count. So you can see just how much is in this kit. And it's rather odd. It's not often you get these parts lists on a separate sheet. Um, but we have today. So we'll have a quick look through. So sprues, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which is non repeated. Seven. We've got eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 large sprues. Obviously, we've got all the screw pack as well. Um, something else in the back. Oh, hang on. 19, 20, so, uh, 22 sprues in total. And all those nice little bits and bobs we've got. Funny how the tires don't seem to be mentioned on there, though. I'm going mad. No, they're not. You okay? Bit weird. But anyway, there's the parts layout. So if you can't find a part, you can use that quickly. Uh, we have uh, some reference material. Um, some of the larger scale kits come with these. So this is going to be a bit of information about the bike. Ooh, falls out as well. Pretty. Uh, so you've got some nice pictures of the bike itself there. Some Japanese text, some English text there as well. So it'll go through the development, uh, history so on and so forth we've got the original 88 africa twin bikes there and the 90 bike as well some info about the engine uh itself and then some nice walk around pictures which are very handy reference looks very cool very nice and again a handy extra to have uh, I'm a bit torn on the decal schemes I love the red scheme but I like the white one with the gold rim so uh, I don't know what to do. I'm a bit torn. Maybe I put the gold rims on the red bike. Uh, I don't know. It could do. It's up to me, I suppose. Um, we're going to play it by ear for now. Um, I honestly don't know. Obviously, it's the same rims, just painted either black or gold. Uh, but again, nice touch to get with there from Tamiya. So well done. We've got the normal Tamiya info sheet, which is basically read the book, don't poke yourself in the eye of a rusty skewer, you know, don't go gargling chipmunks just random stuff in there that you don't really need to concern yourself about really unless you're a complete imbecile and the decals now i would have liked to see cartograph decals because all the later um 12 scale bike kits are whether these are and they're just not marked it i don't know but i couldn't see anything on there about them being that right so we've got a mass set so this is going to be I'm guessing for the bodywork uh, to mask off for a colour, which is going to be a bit awkward, but it's there. Um, sadly, they're not die cut, you've got to cut them out yourself, which is a bit mad. Uh, I've never understood the point of giving you a mask set and there you go, cut it out. But it's there anyway to use, and I'm assuming that's for bodywork. We'll confirm that in a minute, so that's that in there. We've got a small decal sheet of. Ooh, pretty, very nice. So there we've got the instrument displays, 
some placards, some warning labels, the Honda detail, uh, Honda logo, so on and so forth. So very nice. They look very high quality decals. They actually do beautifully done. So hopefully they shouldn't give us any issues. I would have liked to see the cartograph name there. Though, I'm not going to lie, but they shouldn't give any issues at all. And they look lovely. That instrument panel is beautiful. You look at the real bike and watch you fire up. It's uh, it's pretty uh, impressive. So very cool, very very nice. And then we got the main um, scheme. So I'm just looking to see if there actually is anything that needs to be painted. No, so I'm not sure what that mass set is for. I thought it was going to be for these colours, but obviously it's not. So obviously you've got the red scheme, the white scheme, and generic Honda markings there. I really do like that red scheme, but I don't know. Which one to do? I think it is, yeah, it will be that one on the white bike. So it's kind of flipped. We've got the nice red color of the body or the red color of the decals. So we'll play it by here, that's for sure. But nice decals. Beautifully done. And hopefully won't give us any issues at all. Obviously, Tammy is just a phone call away from Hobby Co. Uh, for replacements. But I really would have liked to see in the car graph logo there. Like I said, it may well be, and they're just not labeled. Uh, but they do look good, and hopefully. They won't give us any issues. So, lovely. Decals look really, really good. I need the bag for this because I want to pop them straight back in. I don't like to mess about with the decals. They can always go back in their bag. Let's just spin you around. Bear with me if I fight this bag, and it probably is going to be a fight. There we are. So, yeah, like I said, I've been waiting for this kit for some time. It literally. I've been following it and drooling over it for the past eight months or so that I first, first saw it. And when I saw it was released, I was like, oh, why? Why now? I just bought a ton of kits lately. I literally said, no more. That's it, no more. And they released this. And I was like, oh, I've got to get it. It has to be done. Instruction book. So, again, typical Tamiya. It's going to be the iconic type of uh, instruction book. Let me see get my camera a tad higher. It doesn't really work, unfortunately. So we can get most of it in. Um, it's going to be a typical iconic Tamiya instruction book. So again, tools required uh, over to one side, cutting off parts, masking, undercoating, cementing, do's and don'ts, and a list of all the colours required just there. Uh, keeping track of parts, it's a new one, I've seen them do that before, but i putting an A on there. Uh, match just not noticed it. Cutting off parts, using different types of paint, so lacquer, acrylic, enamel, which funny enough, Tamiya actually covers and different primers and different glues as well. So they've covered pretty much all the required items there in one swift blow. Um, we've got details there about the detailer parts, so the chains, uh, which I've got on order. I would have liked to have it here today, but sadly I haven't. That's just one of those things. Ah, I see now. Gotcha. Okay, so that little um, jig thing we saw before is for checking the size of the screws. I see. So you can pop them in to confirm that they're the correct size. So that's a nice little touch. We've got a list of all the related screws. So these will be life size uh, screws um, there. So if you're in doubt to what they actually are, you can pop them on and confirm that for yourself. Assembly. So we've got some talks about these next to the cement, CA glue, so on and so forth. And assembly, select either A or B, uh, which is going to go for the pearl, glare, white, tricolor. Or victory red so I need to have a look at this color because it is a specific color um, I hope somebody brings it out pretty soon so we start off with crankcase engine so on and so forth typical time instructions you really could go wrong with these at all they're all clearly labeled they're not too busy they're not too fussy they're clear and concise and very very easy to follow anything to different color is labeled clearly anything that requires a um, decal uh, or extras is clearly done and I'm just noticing that TS38, and it's based on TS38, and I've got a TS80, so it must be a pretty specific colour for that rocker cover. But we can play that by ear. So, yeah, we go through to the engine, onto assembling the frame, all the different parts of the frame, different components, different hangers, fitting the engine to the frame, battery box, throttle bodies, reservoir tanks, so on and so forth. Through to the rear monoshock, the rear damper. Assembling that with the required screws, tools, bolts, etc. etc. Assembling, uh, attaching that to the bike. 
Then we've got the rear fender, attaching the rear fender. Any hose lengths are there, they're full size as well. So you can literally line them up, cut them as required. They're all clearly labeled with their exact lengths. Uh, double check it up. I always find add a little bit extra than you think, a couple of mil more. Quite often they can be a little bit short. We're on to the rear swing arm, uh, tail lights, starting assembling these rims and the wheels. So a lot of information here to take in. Be very, very clear what you're doing. Some of the spoke work and again, some very, very um, detailed instructions. I'm just trying to look what we're going to do. Oh, I see. I'm putting some valve and tubing tweezers so you don't damage them at the top there. So again, nice little touch. Front wheel, rear wheel, so on and so forth. Attaching the brake caliper, putting the tire on, it's going to take some care as well. Attaching the rear um, wheel to the bike, two spanners, included there as you can see. With the ball through, which is nice, it's got the proper head on it. Uh, and another this side, rather than being a screw, which is a nice touch. Assembling the plastic included chain. Um, so on and so forth. The stand, there's the stand for it, the plastic stand at the bottom. So what I'm trying to look out for is those magnets, which I haven't seen yet. Probably missed them. And those mass sets. Right, we're onto the exhausts. Popping those all on. All the hose work there, as you can see, starting to feed you through the bike. Starting to build up the front forks. Very cool. Very, very nice. Get the front fender on. Attaching the front forks to the bike. All the inner panels, outer panels, headlight cases. Attaching the front wheel to the bike. And again, there's those uh, brass coloured rods I was talking about. So they are for the wheels. I thought they were for a swing arm, but they're not. Again, hose work. And again, using those spanners to attach the wheels. So that's another nice touch. All the way through. If you spot the uh, magnets or you know, let me know because I think I've probably got a miss them to be honest. The seat, handlebars, grips, throttle, the front screen, all the components of the handlebars. Ah, uh, those springs are for the kickstand. I see. Yeah, makes sense. So it keeps it sprung tension so it actually works. And then we're on to the wing mirrors, sound to attach some decals, so obviously we're past fixing. And then we've got the detail apart. So this is assembling the uh, chain itself. So 120 links in total. So it's gonna keep you busy for a while. Sprocket and whether it'll still turn, I don't know. I hope it does. It should do. Nice, it actually works. And then we're on to the decals themselves. So again, some quite important decals to get down there. Bit of time and consideration needed, but nothing too difficult. And then on the back, we've got the different um, paint schemes. So there's often three color schemes. Uh, Pearl Glow White. Uh, Victory Red. And a digital silver metallic. Ooh. Okay, so there are three colours. Bit of info about applying your decals. And then the sprue list as well. So if you lose any parts, these are the numbers you need. Uh, they're the prices in yen, but if you ring Hobbyco, the number's on here. No, but if you Google it, you can find it anyway. So there we go. A nice look through the box. We're 30, 42 minutes in. So, uh, yeah, I knew it was going to take a while, which is why I didn't dilly-dally around on those parts. I knew it was going to take a while to get through them all. There's a lot there. There's a lot of sprues in the box. There's a lot of plastic. There's a lot of screws. There's a lot of nice little parts like the fork, springs, the tyres. Some really nice detailed parts there. And that looks to be an awesome kit. Uh, nice extras in there, like a little bit of um, little brochure kind of thing on the walk around the bikes. Nice bit of uh, reference material for you. Obviously, you've got all the tools you need, you've got the screwdriver, the spanner for the forks and the wheels and the tyres, etc. etc. And it looks a great kit, it really does. I've looked forward to this one and I'm going to start it tonight. This will be made a start. So once you've got the video edited and up, um, I'll be making a start and we could get progress going on it there and then. So there you go. 
So that's Tamiya's brand new Africa Twin CRF1000L. Uh, beautiful bike and what looks to be an absolutely stunning kit from Tamiya. Um, that hopefully I can get built pretty soon. It doesn't take me a long time. And uh, we can get some progress up on the ISM Facebook page and forum. So there you go. Check out emodels.co.uk, £197 from them. Uh, I got it next day delivery, absolutely fantastic. Uh, really can't fault their service. So head on over there and have a look. And as always, check out the forum, International Scale Modeler. Uh, the Facebook page of the same name. Absolutely fantastically busy pages. Share your work. Come and join us. Come join our community. You're on the channel now. Subscribe to this channel. Give the video a thumbs up, thumbs down. Share it around. If you want to share it somewhere, feel free. No problem at all. Leave a comment. Uh, I read every single comment. I might not reply to them, but I do read them all. And, uh, yeah, if you've got any interesting to point out or say, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, my God, the price, but... It's a hell of a kit for the money. It's, it's expensive, I'm not going to lie, but it's a hell of a kit for the money. Um, and obviously check out umpretail.com as well, my side from Lee's business. And every Friday we have a live show. Come over and join us on a Friday, half eight, uh, sorry, half seven UK, half eight Europe, uh, one thirty central US. Uh, pop on over, look at our live show. Uh, it's great fun. And uh, come join all the guys in the live chat there as well. So there you go. So Tammy's brand new one to scale, Africa Twin. Uh, CBF, sorry, CRF 1000L. Uh, looks to be a great kit, and uh, you need to go buy it. If you like bikes, you need to get this. Absolutely get it or not. Aftermarket or not, you need to go and get it for sure. So there you go. So, part ISM, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye bye.